Now then, in closing, how, how can we overcome the, the carnal Christianity and become more spiritual Christians? Number one, we need to recognize it. Somebody needs to tell us. Somebody needs to tell us that we are uh, in danger of being carnal Christians. If nobody tells you, you'll never know it because pride will cover it up. Somebody has to preach it and teach it. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And he said, I'm coming to you. But I'm coming to you and preaching as I'm preaching to babes in the Lord. I'm preaching to carnal Christians. You need to grow up. So we need to have somebody tell us and inform us that we need help in this area. Number two, we need to know that God still loves you very, very much. However carnal you may be, however a babe you might be, you're a babe in Christ and He loves you. He loves you. And He wants you to grow in the stature of a Christian. He wants you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of, of Himself. He wants you to grow up like Christians and become strong. Become strong. And these points that I've brought out, the spiritual Christian is strong in the opposite of all those points I brought out. He is strong in the very opposite. Very opposite. The carnal Christian is complaining and saying, Woe is me. Woe is me. Why did this happen to me? I don't understand why it happened to me. I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to do this. I don't know why this happens to me. Complaining, complaining, complaining. I'm sick. I don't know why I got sick. I can't even work. I've lost my health. Why? Why? And people out there in the world are walking around in good health. Why did it happen to me? They complain and they become dis distressed and depressed. The spiritual Christian has learned to thank God for his troubles. That's so important. The difference. The next time you have a trouble, some of you have got troubles tonight. You've got a burden on your heart right now. What should you do? I won't tell you what you do with that burden. You, first of all, you go home tonight and on your knees you thank God for that word. You thank God for it. You may be like the old boy that heard a sermon like that and he went home and he prayed for this, this guy that he just didn't like. The guy was trying to run him out of business and everything else. But he prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him. And then he finally got up on his knees and said, Now, Lord, you know I didn't mean a word of that. <laughs> But he kept praying, he kept praying until finally, praise God, he could pray for him. And he meant it. And so we can pray, God, thank you for my troubles. Just keep on thanking him for your trouble. Keep on thanking him for your trouble until you begin to mean it. And when you begin to mean it, then praise God, you're getting stronger in the Lord. You're getting stronger in the Lord. How do we overcome? We overcome by the Word of God. By the Word of God. It's a sad thing, but a common Christian knows very little about the Bible. He may be in church for years. He may have been in Sunday school class for years. But he knows very little about the Bible when it comes down to actually needing it and applying it to his life. He knows very little about scriptures that he can quote verbatim. He knows very few scriptures. The physical, the, uh, the common Christian needs to read the Word of God every day. Every day, read the Word of God. Especially the New Testament. Read those epistles of Paul. Read the epistles of Peter and John. Read just a few verses every day. That's where we're living now. 
and of those marvelous gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to read the word. The Bible says in 2 Peter, the second chapter, verse 2, this word, Desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. Desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. So we grow through reading the word of God. We grow through reading, and then we grow through focusing on Jesus. That was a great message Brother Hager preached this morning. Focusing on Jesus Christ. By the way, we have a great preacher in Brother Billy Park. He's doing a great job preaching the word out there. Amen. Praise God, but we need to focus on Jesus. He is the Lord. My God will supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Everything is by Christ Jesus. God loves you and forgives your sins by Christ Jesus. God loves you and will lift you up and give you strength by Christ Jesus. Everything He does for us in the church, He will bless the church. He will revive the church. He will empower the church. Praise God will be by Christ Jesus, who is the head of the church. So we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. We've got to focus on Jesus. That means talk to Him. Read His Word. Spend time with Him. Spend time with Him. Praise God. Believe in Him with all your heart. With all your heart. Believe in Him. 